this is India Decides and I'm Maria Shakil. The big battle for India has begun. Both the BJP and the Congress have finalized their alliances, a factor that could play a decisive role in determining the ultimate winner. The alliance arithmetic and chemistry are being analyzed. As of today, as the nominations for the first phase saw several political bigwigs enter the race, it was also the day BJP announced it will go solo in Punjab. Last week, after weeks of seat-sharing talks, the BJP and BJD have decided to go separate ways in Urissa. India Alliance, which began on a strong footing last year, was seen to be unraveling with important partners such as the Trinamool Congress and JDU parting ways and many discordant notes such as the alliance partner, the CPI, fielding a candidate at Wynard where Rahul Gandhi will be contesting again. Ahmadi Party and Congress have mutually agreed to fight separately in Punjab. The strong show of unity visible last year has now faded even though the alliance has managed to seal deals in important seats and important states as Uttar Pradesh. Exodus of several big leaders from Congress and alliance partner in JDU has been a setback for the Congress. The BJP, on the other hand, has been quietly working on seat deals with various smaller parties to strengthen the NDA bloc in order to ensure that they appear to be of a bigger umbrella. The BJP has also entered into a deal with Chirag Paswan in Bihar, though that has upset his estranged uncle, Pashupati Kumar Paras, who quit from the union cabinet. In South, the BJP has been unable to stitch together an alliance with a major political force after talks of alliance with the AIA-DMK did not go through. Jury is still out on how much of vote transfer will it really ensure between the BJ, between the Samajwadi Party and the Congress after the failed experiment of UPK Ladke in 2017 assembly polls. The Mahavikas Agari tensions in Maharashtra is still continuing. So as of today, how are the alliances stacked up? That's our debate on India Decides. Joining me on the show, Salman Soz, National Spokesperson of the Congress, Nalin Kohli, National Spokesperson of the BJP. We have Aditi Fadnis, Senior Journalist. Nalin Kohli, Mahayuti is still taking shape. No alliance with Akali is, no alliance with BJD. How will NDA cross 400? First of all, we never had an alliance with the BJD. There was an attempt to have an alliance. Second, we had uh, the alliance with the Akalis ended long back. Again, there was an attempt to explore whether there can be an alliance. There was never an announcement that there would be an alliance with either of them. Mahayuti is a different situation. Our, we already are in an alliance. There is talk about how the seats have to happen. So there's no breakdown of alliance. And uh, the BJP has tied up with several other uh, you know, entities or prior or political parties. So I think as far as an alliance is seen, the NDA primarily the BJP with other parties, is in a very strong and what I would call the pole position electorally. The Congress party, on the other hand, spoke of an allowance and announced a so-called India alliance or a India bloc, depending how you call it. And uh, that has unraveled. Partners are no longer partners. The Trinamool Congress has bluntly told the Congress it would be reduced to less than 40 seats take two seats or three seats and finally put up candidates in all its seats without giving a single one to the Congress. The left front and the Trinamool Congress was peeved with the Congress party to have a sort of an understanding with the left front. They have also rejected the Congress party. In fact, put up a candidate, Annie Raja, against Mr. Rahul Gandhi in Vainad, basically saying that your seat is actually a Amethi. Go back to Amethi. Why are you in Kerala? So I think the Congress party is on the defensive. They've tied up with the Samajwadi party. They've tied up with a few more entities. But the national bloc that they were speaking with was a non-starter beyond a cup of tea and never took off the ground politically. Tomorrow, uh, the first phase nominations end, Salman Sos. Uh, how do you look at your own position, the India bloc position? Is there an India bloc or is it more of a mirage? 
I think the India block is going to show you and everybody else sitting at home right now uh, that uh, come June, there'll be a new government uh, that will be leading India, and rightly so. Now, as far as the alliances are concerned, uh, we, we can get into that, but look at the alliances we already have. We have a very strong alliance in Uttar Pradesh. We have a very strong alliance in Maharashtra. And by the way, the NDA in Maharashtra is in such disarray that alliance partners basically are threatening not to contest, you know, to basically can walk out of the alliance if somebody contests. So there, there's a lot of problems in Maharashtra. By the way, BJP is very much disliked. I don't want to use the word hate because that is too strong a word. Very much disliked in Maharashtra. You will see the tables turn in Maharashtra in a way that must be giving jitters to some people from the nearby state of, uh, of Gujarat. Hmm. Uh, as far as Bihar is concerned, again, they had to beg Nitish Kumar to come back and in trying to, you know, look what they've done with the family of Ram Vilas Paswan. First they worked with his brother, now they're working with the son. So they're basically, BJP is a very malign force. They go after family members. They divide family members. So they will, to gain power, they'll do whatever it takes. But they're not going to, in, in Bihar, they're in trouble. In Tamil Nadu, they never had, they had an alliance with the AIDMK. Finished. No alliance there. In Delhi, now the Ahmadi Party and Congress, we have an alliance, a strong alliance. In Haryana, we have an alliance. And you will see in Haryana, we're going to get more seats than these people are. In West Bengal, there is not an alliance. But the Trinamool Con Congress is very much part of the India alliance. Even okay. though for strategic reasons, we may not be contesting together. In Punjab, we are doing the same thing, even though Ahmadi Party Party is part of the India alliance. In Karnataka, by the way, just yesterday, you should have seen how the alliance partners of the NDA were fighting against each other. And you, you know about Telangana. They had a former B team, the BRS. Look what they've done to that family, what they've done to that party. BJ, and, and then Punjab, in Punjab, they had Akali Dal, the, one of the oldest alliance partners of uh, the BJP. So you are Shiv saying Sena that basically the BJP is untrustworthy. I'll ask Nalin to respond to that. But before that, Aditi Fadnis, I'm just looking at some numbers here, Aditi. Uh, because, you know, uh, tomorrow, as I said, nominations will close. Um, 102 seats in all in the first phase. NDA, in, in, when we look at NDA, the BJP is contesting on 77. The other NDA allies on 23. Uh, in, on the other side, the Congress is contesting on 57, 20 less than the BJP, and the alliance partners are contesting on 42. Uh, first phase, if we were to look at it, particularly from that prism, how, uh, how do you see the alliances playing out? To the extent that alliances are important in the first phase, uh, I'm not seeing too much uh, dissonance. Uh, either on the part of the NDA or on the part of the of the India alliance. Hmm. So uh, I don't think it's going to be a, a very big uh, uh, issue in the first phase. Okay. So if you don't see that play out as well at all, then in which phase do you think that will become a factor? I think in Punjab that it is going to be a factor, which is the last phase, as you know. Hmm. Uh uh, in between, uh, in Odisha and other places, it is going to be a factor. But Maharashtra. in the first phase, yeah, I, I, Maharashtra actually is going to be the most interesting election uh, all over India. Uh, because uh, people have changed so many parties and so many alliances that it's, uh, it's very hard to keep track of who is in which party and which alliance. So uh, Maharashtra is going to be a very, very important uh, election of from the point of view of history. Okay. Uh, Nalin, the charge coming from the Congress is that you're untrustworthy. Uh, look what you did to Chirag Paswan and settle the entire legacy debate in the LJP, the manner in which you did. Maria, I often f believe that when substance is lost, adjectives creep in. And that's why you... You know, you start a person will start building a narrative with adjectives: strong, weak, uh, negative force, divide family. You know, sort of descriptors. Let's come back to this: a family-based political entity, in relationship with other family-centric political entities, is talking about divisions of family. There is a there are two political and sort of entities or models in the country: family-centric, family-based. What is that? 
that is that a single first family will determine the fate of the political entity directly or indirectly either by the person from the family or their chosen one now that's one model versus a non family centric party or an ideology based party primarily that would be the bjp and left parties hmm. they would be ideology based not family centric as we see we say with the congress party samajwadi party several other entities now i'm not saying one is better or worse these are the two models now let's come to the fact of say chirag paswan ji chirag paswan ji throughout the period that he also contested against the bjp or the jdu in the last election kept saying i am the sort of hanuman or prime minister modi his relationship was live there was a political understanding with his uncle that relationship live has got translated into a uh, uh, alliance and there is no such thing as nitish kumar ji or the bjp had to beg with each other this beg with each other happens only where there is a lord in a family and the other people know that my talent has no value because i am not born in the first family so i need the grace of the first family to make it anywhere so you know these are the models so i think salman is entitled from his party's perspective to come out with this narrative as far as i see it there is no indi alliance the indi alliance is an understanding between respective parties at a state level at the national level they were a cup of tea let's meet over a cup of tea get together and why not political parties can meet political leaders meet but they wanted to project a grand alliance forget about a grand alliance there is no alliance okay in the absence of a common minimum program or or uh, an alliance agenda salman is there really an alliance leader Maya, office a, there, there, there is a there is a very there is a very simple agenda that the india alliance has very simple and i think that is that is not our agenda that is the agenda of the people of this country and what is this agenda the agenda is that our young people are suffering they do not have jobs the prime minister promised two crore jobs per year no nothing has happened the prime minister promised that the farmers of this country he would double their income look farmers are not allowed to come into delhi to you know talk about their condition the the prime minister said na khane na khaunga na khane dunga that means i'll go after corrupt, the corrupt people of this country and he ended up instituting the biggest corruption scandal in this country in our independent history that's what the prime minister has done and the impact of th that is clear to everybody what the prime minister has uh, done what the bjp has done is basically said you know we are going to be the we are just going to take the british uh, you know we're learning from the british we are going to divide and rule and then we'll do hafta wasool divide and rule hafta wasool that has become the bjp's philosophy now and i think this is dangerous for the country and i know nalin will disagree but the fact of the matter is i want to ask nalin he says let's talk about substance let us talk about substance did the prime minister not say that manufacturing sector we need to create jobs the manufacturing sector should be 25% of the economy and is it not true that the manufacturing sector is only 13% of the economy the lowest in six decades is it not true nalin that the unemployment rate under prime minister modi reached a five decade uh, uh, high is it not true yes. that has happened under your government what are you saying there is a whole agenda for the india alliance the india alliance is not here by the way okay the india alliance is not here just to get one person out of office okay. the india alliance is here to yeah, protect our people okay. and our democracy nalin kohli now this, please this yes nalin go ahead is about to basically devour that's what this party is doing to mr arvind kejriwal to mr hemant sore okay. to all opposition leaders so, if by the way do not forget that in my own state they arrested the entire polit political leadership of the state entire political leadership okay. then divided the state we Salman, cannot trust these people let nalin let, let nalin speak now and uh, then i bring in aditi several points to bring up hmm. i mean salman gives the idea that the farmers of india are unhappy 12 crore of them receive every month every three every four months three times a year a certain amount fixed into it there have been some protests by some farmers but is it all over the country is it in every state 
farmers are there are no farmers in say Gujarat, Maharashtra, uh, say Bengal, Odisha. Leave BJP only. I mean, there are farmers everywhere. So a certain section from Punjab and Punjab centric Haryana have sort sort. So be it. They have been also there has been a reach out by the government. Ministers went and met them to explain and engage with them. Let me come to the next part. Hafta Wasuli is the word uh, Salman used. Let's look at ED rates. In fact, I retweeted somebody's very interesting tweet and the data is fascinating. The ED has conducted approximately 3,000 rates. 3,000 rates between 2014 and 22, out of which only 26 companies bought electoral bonds and who had a a ED action. Out of 3,000 between 14 and 22, out of these 26 companies, 16 of them bought it around the time when they had an ED action. So not all of them also did it. The BJP received 37% money from all of these companies as compared to 63% which went to the other company, uh, which went to the other political parties opposed to the BJP. So a falsehood narrative, a narrative based on falsehood is what the Congress party and their, uh, okay. uh, and their you know, leaders have always uh, tried right. to bring up. The, this, and the last word on India Decides will always go to a woman. They are entitled to and say, have last, Aditi, last question. Uh, Aditi, quickly, uh, okay. you know, sure. is, is India Block really a non-starter or do you think it, should have, it would have been better off had they looked at some kind of post-poll alliances because, you know, one is to one as the initial plan was on 400 seats is something that's that's really not happening at the moment. We do know that a common minimum program and uh, pre-election uh, understandings work better for the alliance than uh, not. Uh, there is no common minimum program. There is no alliance. There is no talk. Uh, but there is some sort of a tacit understanding yes. that uh, the all the parties of the India Alliance will not consciously try to hurt each other. Uh, that's as far as we'll go. So I don't know. We have to see how people respond All right. to this kind of a very loose, very, uh, uh, very uh, undefined uh, yes. alliance. Yes. All right, Aditi. Nalin Kohli and Salman Soz, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And NDTV's election journey has reached the Baramati Lok Sabha constituency. Baramati is one of the most high-profile seats in the country. Sharad Pawar was a member of parliament from the seat for a long time. And then his daughter, Supriya Sule, became the MP from this seat thrice. Here's a ground report. <laughs> political temperature in Maharashtra is soaring and one of the prominent seats where we are going to see a tough contest is Baramati from Western Maharashtra where there will be a fight between a daughter and a daughter-in-law. Sharad Pawar's daughter Supriya Sule who is also a sitting MP from the Baramati seat is contesting against Ajit Pawar's wife Sunetra Pawar. This hug may suggest a cordial relationship, but does it truly reflect meeting of hearts? Is this scene emblematic of recent events where Supriya Sule and Sunetra Pawar found themselves in close proximity within a temple? Despite both being part of the same family, they've emerged as political adversaries. While Supriya Sule vigorously campaigns to secure the Baramati Lok Sabha seat for the fourth consecutive time, Sunetra Pawar too is entrenched in the battleground, fiercely defending her position. In the political arena, Supriya Sule refrains from directly attacking her sister-in-law, Sunetra. Yet, she raises grave allegations against the Mahayuti, the coalition that she represents. In Supriya Sule's campaign, her father and the party's leader, Sharad Pawar, is actively participating. 
Rohit Pawar, who is Sharad Pawar's grandson and also a legislator, is reaching out to the people to advocate for his aunt. Rohit Pawar suggests that the surge of sympathy following Ajit Pawar's defection from Sharad Pawar's NCP last year will ultimately favour Supriya Sule. No, last time, if you see Supriya Tai's lead, I think it was about 60,000 or 70,000. जो लोगों से मिलने के बाद ये फील आ रहा है, but definitely two and a half lakh के आगे जाएगी, ऐसा लग रहा है। At the other end, Sunitra Pawar is diligently striving to match her sister-in-law's vigor. Her day begins as early as 8 a.m., delving into the rural heartlands of Baramati. There, she engages in intimate gatherings, attentively hearing out the villagers' concerns. In an interview to NDTV, Sunetra Pawar acknowledged her relatively low political profile, affirming her commitment to carve out her own identity among the people. She emphasized the necessity of putting in the hard work to establish a connection with the community. तो जाके मिल रहे हैं हम लोग जहाँ भी जाते हैं वहाँ कोई न कोई समस्याएं आती हैं अभी आप देख रहे हैं यहाँ आए हैं यहाँ तो पानी की समस्या बहुत बुरी तरह से चिंतित हैं लोग स्थानिक लेवल का प्रोग्राम प्रॉब्लम है वहाँ तो जल्दी से हम यहाँ के लोगों से बात करके छुड़वा सकते हैं लेकिन जो बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है वो दादा के माध्यम से या और कोई माध्यम से छुड़ाने का प्रयत्न कर सकते हैं According to Ajit Pawar's associates, they believe that Sunetra Pawar will benefit from Ajit Pawar joining the Mahayuti Alliance. The BJP was against the NCP in the last election, but is supporting the NCP this time. Our coalition in Maharashtra will be able to take a step forward. And this will be our double-engine government, which will be in the center of this situation. एनडीए का गवर्नमेंट फॉर्म होने से और स्टेट में भी एनडीए का गवर्नमेंट फॉर्म होने से इस विकास को अधिक गति महाराष्ट्र में और देश में मिलेगी। While the rivalry between Supriya Sule and Sunetra Pawar is unfolding, the story isn't as straightforward. There's a twist in the tale. Shiv Sena leader and former minister Vijay Shiv Thakre has jumped into the fray. In fact, Vijay Shivthire has decided to contest the elections due to his long-standing rivalry with Ajit Pawar. In the previous assembly elections, Shivthire was a candidate from the Purandar constituency, but Ajit Pawar had challenged him, stating that he won't let Shivthire win the elections. Shivthire lost the elections and now is gearing up to contest against Ajit Pawar's wife to settle scores. However, he denies any personal vendetta behind his decision and claims that he is doing this out of a sense of justice. कोई बदले की भावना है ही नहीं। उन्होंने गलत किया था ये तो पूरे महाराष्ट्र को मालूम है। लेकिन मैंने उनको माफ कर दिया था उसी टाइम पे। मेरा अपना सवाल है कि ठीक है, उन्होंने जो किया वो माफ मैंने माफ किया, लेकिन डेस्टिनी, डेस्टिनी विल नॉट फॉरगिव। Lush green sugarcane fields are the hallmark of Baramati. More prosperous than the farmers in other parts of Maharashtra, the sugarcane cooperatives in this region mark its identity. It was from the western Maharashtra that the sugarcane cooperative movement began. Through the influence of these sugar cooperatives, the Pawar family has pursued its politics. Baramati ki beti, ye chunao kam se kam do dhai lakh se jitegi. Is baar bhi full time. जो जीत होगी वो सुप्रेत है कि हो। इस बार बारामती किसको मौका देगी? बारामती की बेटी को या बहु को? बहु को, क्योंकि उन्होंने बहुत ही स्कूल्स वगैरह बहुत अच्छा किया है, सराउंडिंग नेचर, रास्ते बहुत अच्छे किए हैं, इसलिए इस टाइम वही सिलेक्ट होगी। Near Katavari in Baramati, the temple of Lord Hanuman holds political significance. Although Sharad Pawar is not often seen visiting or performing rituals at the temple, for the past several decades, he and his family members, including his nephew Ajit Pawar and daughter Supriya Sule, have initiated the election campaigns from this temple. This tradition has been faithfully upheld, not only by Sharad Pawar, but also his successors. It will be intriguing to see upon whom Lord Hanuman's blessing bestow favor.
In this Lok Sabha constituency, there are six assembly segments with two each dominated by the BJP, Congress and NCP. In the previous elections, Supriya Sule defeated her BJP rival Kanchan Kul with 1,55,774 votes. Baramati is going to the polls on May the 7th. On June 4, the big day will reveal whom the electorates have favoured. Baramati's daughter Supriya Sule or daughter-in-law Sunetra Pavar. With camera person Rajendra Dayalkar and Jitendra Dikshit, Bureau Report, NDTV.